Well, we are now officially in winter. The nights are dark, long, and cold. So what better time to do a project, a build project? And in this video, I am gonna do a complete overhaul of this, my office. <laughs> So the first issue is this office is north facing, which means it doesn't get any light, especially at this time of year. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all the dark colours and make everything light, bright and airy. And I think that, that alone will make a massive difference to how I feel when I'm in this office. My desk is also dark and that was a bad choice. And it's also really long. It's too big. The blind that covers the window does not work. Just behind me there in the corner is my printer and scanner. It just all feels a bit higgledy-piggledy and a bit thrown together. I've uh, got some cable issues. Occasionally I'll film videos in my office and this is my lighting setup. I sit there at my desk and I talk to camera. We've got some nice lights there, but it's all incredibly fixed. It's not flexible, which means I could pretty much only film from one angle. And this is quite a big room. And I think that there's potential to have a couple of different angles. And I want something that's flexible, that's mobile, that's all fixed. And if I want to record a video, I just, yeah, well, we'll get onto that. I'm, I'm going to build something. It should be pretty cool. I have really poor organization of all my film negatives. All in all, the office is fine and it works and many people would be more than happy with this space. But I feel like it can be greatly improved for functionality, creativity, and just make me happier where I spend most of my time. Unfortunately, I didn't have a steamer, so I had to remove this wallpaper inch by inch, which was an absolute nightmare. Well, that is a job that I never want to have to do again. <laughs> I was a little bit worried about removing things from the walls because of the damage that might lie beneath, but I had no idea how bad it was gonna be. Okay, brace yourself, everybody. For some reason, I chose to stick this on with sticky Velcro and I have a terrible feeling it's gonna destroy the wall. So, <laughs> here we go. Oh, oh, yep, yep. There we go. Ah, damn it. After removing my lighting setup and the rest of the soundproofing, I attempted to use heat to remove the rest of the adhesive, but it was no good. I was in big trouble. Look at this, man, it's just coming away from the wall. We've got problems and I think I'm gonna need some help. Had to get the uh, plaster in <laughs> because having that stuff stuck to the wall completely destroyed it. But luckily enough, do you remember I went to Patagonia? I think it was 2019, went to Patagonia and I shot this image. Well, there's a local artist in Whitley Bay, Lee, who contacted me to paint said image and he did a fantastic job. Turns out that Lee is also a plasterer. So he has saved the day big time, but more than a plasterer, is a fantastic artist. So if you want to check out his work, I'll link to his Instagram below. In fact, his Instagram handle is here. Honestly, his work is phenomenal and is a plasterer, but he is becoming an artist, he wants to go full time as an artist. So if you can help support him, that'd be fantastic. I know he's he's saving the day for me at very short notice, because I tell you what, I, were, I thought we were in trouble. I thought we'd have to put a stop to this whole office refurb, but yeah, we're back on track, thankfully. Well, I feel more zen already. This, apart from that light shade, which I'm going to change, this base room is complete. Now the wallpaper that's not bad. I'm not a professional decorator. The wallpaper is a little bit Michael Buble, but you can't tell when there's just the normal soft lighting. So I'm happy with the wallpaper. I am ecstatic 
with my paint job. It's just 100% perfect. But for now, I have to make the most important decision of this entire office refurbishment. Where is the desk gonna go? And let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, I've been looking up feng shui. From my very limited feng shui research, I learned that the best place to have your desk is by a source of natural light and so that you are facing into the room, facing the door, basically so no one can creep up behind you. So at the minute, minute, pay attention to the echo that you're hearing now because we're gonna deal with that later on in the video. The only new item that I have is this desk that I put down here, which is actually a sit-stand desk. And I'm really excited for building that train out because sitting at a desk man for eight hours, I get, I get pains down here because I'm always carrying backpacks and stuff. That is no exaggeration. I will easily spend eight hours a day sitting at my desk. And I think sitting at a desk for that long is contributing to various back problems and shoulder problems that I have, which, oh, okay, fair enough, could well be my age. But I tell you what, standing or having the option to stand at a desk, I think is genuinely, and I don't use this phrase lightly, I think is going to be a game changer. Now, this desk is from Ergo Desks. And at the end of the video, I'm going to do a full desk talk. So I think it's going to make such a difference to my work life. Now we all saw how bad my cable problem was earlier. Well I'm determined not to make the same mistake again so forgive me I might have gone a little bit overboard with my cable management in this video for the next minute or so. I do apologize but I tell you what if you're into that kind of thing you're gonna love this. You kinda don't realise how many cables you have until you set up your computer, monitors, hard drive, there's a lot to deal with. And on top of that, my power socket has come unstuck from underneath the desk and there's no way of screwing it on. So I made a simple bracket using this builder's band. Oh, so the desk, the desk is almost complete but there is one big problem I'm having and that uh, is my storage device. It's incredibly important. It's also very big, bulky and heavy and I don't want it sitting on the desktop because it doesn't fit and it looks unsightly. Ah, if there was ever a use for a sit-stand desk. Builders band to the rescue again. Setting up my desk was easy because its purpose was clear, but building a workstation was causing me quite a few issues because I want the workstation to wear many different hats and I want to build it using furniture that I already have and I'm worried it's gonna feel very cobbled together. So I want this workstation to house my printer, my scanner, all of my photography gear, my books, my label printer, my A4 laser printer. I want a large surface area to work for viewing and cutting prints and organizing gear. I also want it to look good and wait for it, I want it to be mobile. <gasps> I'm sure now you can see why I struggled so much with this difficult brief. Now I really wasn't sure about the black worktop, I wanted it to be wooden to match my desk. However, looking at the printer and these images, these black and white images in black frames, it all just comes together and works and because it's separate from the desk area, I believe that it's kind of, yeah, well basically I don't think it looks too bad, I don't think the images pull the whole workstation together. There we go. Today's sponsor is Beer52. I'm obliged to tell you, over 18s only and UK viewers only. So if you're not from the UK, so Beer52 are offering a free case of eight exclusive craft beers. All you've got to do is pay postage of 5.95, cover that postage, and you'll get yourself a nice case of eight beers. So I've been getting beers from Beer52 for quite a while now, and I've got to tell you, as someone who does enjoy a nice craft ale, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice price, it's like Christmas every month. Um, you get, because they send beers from different parts of the world and different regions, so you get to try stuff that you would just never normally have access to. And this month's box, the Christmas box, is actually from the southwest of England. An area that's famous for its beautiful coastline, it's surfing, it's beaches, and it's a 
place that I really should visit more and photograph. But what you might not know is that the Southwest is home to some of the UK's best independent breweries and included for the first time ever is a beer from Verdant Brewery, which is renowned as one of the best breweries in the world. So I need a break from all this decorating and building. That is good. Um, Yes, yeah, so we're getting we're getting sharp, sharp tropical notes and uh, citrus. We're getting a, a good citrus aftertaste. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm no connoisseur, but it's a good beer. So Wild Beer, Arbor Ales, Harbour Brewing, they're all featured in this box from the Southwest. So you get a bit of a beer tour, a pub crawl, if you will, of the Southwest of England in this month's box. And if you don't like the beers or you, you don't want to keep with the subscription, you can pause or cancel it at any time. Mm. Oh, I forgot, almost forgot to mention, you get Ferment Magazine so you can learn all about your beers. A selection of tasty snacks as well. Tangy cheese crunchy chickpeas. So it really is a good deal. Go to beer52.com forward slash heaton, pay your 5 dollars postage or your 5 dollars postage and get this case, Southwest beers, highly recommended this Christmas. I really love this old chair. It's where, this, this is where I sit when I'm reading books, when I'm looking for inspiration, when I need a bit of peace and quiet and I wanna step away from the desk, from the computer. But the problem is this chair now doesn't really go in this room. So what I want to do is I want to create a bit of an area in this corner, a space of its own. And the way I'm gonna do that is in this box here. <laughs> Now, do you remember earlier in the video we had some echo issues with the audio? Well, these are very fancy acoustic panels. Now, I still have my acoustic blankets. I've actually put them up behind my computer where I keep my voice over microphone. So we have nice audio control there, but it wasn't enough. I needed something on this back wall. So I spent an extortionate amount of money just to do this little corner because not only does it solve the echo problem and absorb all of the acoustics, but it looks great and it gives me that cozy, warm separation for this corner which I need and it's a slightly different backdrop to the, let's face it, monochrome, grey, white and black room so far. We need to now start thinking about ejecting, ejecting? injecting some warmth into the office with this lovely red chair, these nice acoustic panels, and a few other features we're gonna add. Well, thank God for the video sponsor because each panel costs 135 pounds. That's nigh on 450 quid just to do this tiny corner. So one thing I wanted to achieve with this office rebuild was to have separate storage for my photography gear as opposed to storing it all with my video gear. Now that might seem odd, but I need separation between video and photography. I bought this filing cabinet off Facebook Marketplace for £25 and I think it's going to make the perfect gear locker because it's not too tall, not too wide, but it is incredibly deep. Now I'm a bit of a hoarder and like to keep things that I think might come in useful one day, just like all of this pre-cubed foam which I've had for years. Now admittedly it's probably not necessary for me to create individual compartments for all of my camera gear but boy I tell ya, it feels good. And this drawer is dedicated to film photography equipment. The drawer above is dedicated to my digital kit. So I replaced my chandelier with a six-way spotlight which gives me a bit more control over the direction of the lighting. 
I splashed out on this tubular LED light from IKEA, cost me £70, but it works so well to illuminate my desk area because I can twist it and make the light softer so that it doesn't blind my peripheral vision when working at my computer. I hid a little LED strip behind my workbench so I can add a bit of illumination to what is the darker side of the room. And of course we have my reading light in cosy corner. Now when I turn off the big light, which is a bit too bright for just general working, but have my three ambient lights on, it makes for a beautifully cosy workspace. So the office is almost complete and I'm going to do a full tour in just a couple of minutes time but I wanted to address the video situation. Up until now I have filmed this entire video using this ring light which is great for work and it illuminates the space but it's not good for video. My previous video setup with that crossbar and those floor to ceiling stands that was messy, ugly, um, and fixed. I wanted a mobile situation, a mobile filming situation. So I'm creating something new. This is a C stand and this is what I'm going to use to make my mobile YouTube video recording um, thing, unit. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> I'll bet you didn't know that the company who make my tripod also make studio lighting amongst many other things. And this tiny little light is an SL160DN. And believe it or not, this is going to be the only light source for my studio setup. Now I want the C stand to be clean, tidy, minimal and distraction free. So I'm only having on it a camera mount, a monitor and a light on the top. But what's really important is how I diffuse that light. And I'm going to do that with a softbox. Now I footage were kind enough to send me a light, but also two different softboxes to try out. A lantern softbox and a more directional honeycomb softbox. So this gives you an idea of the ambient light without the main softbox on. So this is the lantern softbox, which should give me a nice even light on my face, bit on my hair, but distribute a good amount of light on the background. Now we have the directional honeycomb softbox, which is a lot brighter on my face. I'll turn it down a bit. Um, so it's more directional on my face, and as a result, the background is a lot darker, but it does give a nice soft glow, almost like a vignette look. But I'm not sure I'm enjoying this dark background. You know, I want everything to feel light, bright and airy. So currently undecided. So there was a little bit of back and forth, but in the end I went for the lantern softbox, which not only illuminates me quite nicely, but it throws a nice amount of light onto the background. The honeycomb softbox, for me, I felt was a bit too cinematic, a bit too dramatic. Like, what am I trying to create when doing videos in this office? You know, nothing spectacular, just want a nice, honest video. And I feel this light adds to that feel. I don't know if that makes sense and if you can even attach the word honest to lighting, I'm not sure, but for me it feels good. And actually if you're curious what my setup looks like, let me try and show you. Just ignore the cables, uh, we've, we've not cable tied in the whole thing yet, but we've got a nice monitor and camera there and there's the lantern softbox. Um, so yeah, nice and straightforward and the great thing is Oh, it's uh, it's mo it's mobile. It's mobile to within reason uh, because I've got carpet down, so I have to be careful when pushing it. So you've watched me transform this office, and now it's my pleasure to give you the full tour with all the little details that you may not have seen throughout this video. So let's begin the tour with a brief before and after comparison. Now 
thing that I'm most proud of with this office build is my cable tidying. I have done a fantastic job, if I do say so myself, and it's all about the attention to detail. No cable went unhidden, and only about 1% of cables are actually visible. And that is a fact that I'm quite proud of. I mean, look underneath my desk. It is a piece of cable art. So whilst we're here, let's look at the desk setup in more detail because after all, this is where I spend 95% of my time when in the office. This is an Atlas sit-stand desk from Ergo Desks. It has a walnut finish with a white frame. Ergo Desks were kind enough to supply this desk and let me tell you, I am so happy with this collaboration because it's taken me about three weeks to make this video and in that time, I have been using my office as a normal working office and all of my time has been spent standing at the desk. I haven't had it in the sitting position for about three weeks and it is a revelation to me how much of a benefit standing at a desk is. Mounted to my desk is my Rode NT-USB microphone which I use for recording these voiceovers. I also have my iMac Pro from 2017 which has a 5K monitor and a second monitor which is a BenQ which I have controversially rotated into a vertical position. I bought this desk mat off Amazon, excellent value, and I have to say it's so much better than just using a mouse mat. I also added this cheap little plastic drawer underneath the desk, which is just stuck on with adhesive, but that's great because it holds all of my little bits and pieces, pens, memory cards, that kind of thing, that always clutter up the desk. Moving on to Cozy Corner, you've already seen me put up these acoustic panels. I was so unsure about them because they cost me a lot of money but I tell you I wouldn't go back they smell fantastic it smells like a sauna but they look great and they add so much warmth to the office which is what it needed I've attached these two shelves just next to my leather chair these shelves are from B&M bargains 15 pounds each and I think they look fantastic and they just allow me to uh, display a few items you know add a bit of uh, personality to the office. We now move over to what could be the eyesore of the office, the workstation. I had problems with this from the beginning. Now the functionality is perfect. It works so well. My camera storage, it's got my books stored in there. It's got all my paperwork, my film. It's a great surface area for looking at prints, packing my bag and doing any work that requires a large empty desktop. It's also mobile. I can pull out this slightly smaller table from underneath and wheel it around my office, which has many uses. And I'm really happy with my panoramic print above the workstation. This was shot on the Isle of Harris on my Fuji GX617 medium format panoramic film camera if you're interested. And the print above my Canon print also looks fantastic. That is not my image. I bought that in Chamonix after spending a week hiking in the Alps. My mobile YouTube Studio C stand is a great addition to the office. It has a small footprint and it does the job beautifully. It also gives me a mobile light source again if I want to look at prints in more detail. And that's what I like to do. I like to look at prints, I like to look at books, and to have a big light that I can move around is a great asset to the office. Now the eagle-eyed viewers of you might have noticed that for a photographer's office there's quite a lot of blank wall space. Well, the wall next to Cozy Corner, I had earmarked a lovely print by Ben Horn, one of my favourite images, but unfortunately we had a little accident, so that is currently in the repair shop. But the wall behind me, this chimney breast, that I want to say for something special, a project, a statement piece. Now I've no idea what, but I do know in the future I want to hang something uh, quite special, something p particularly designed for that chimney breast. At the minute I'm thinking three vertical panels, maybe on the X-Pan, possibly a triptych, possibly a kind of vertical stitch, black and white most likely to kind of fit with the theme of this side of the office. But that is a future project that I'm very much looking forward to. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already to see what will become of the chimney breast, hopefully in the not too distant future. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next week.